keep it in the age of Wonder Beast Season 2. And welcome to the Ruby Tuesday, my name is Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's original animated series at season 2 of Keeper and the Age of Wonder Beast. The first season uh, I was quite taken back by, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was, mostly because the demographic I thought was going to be for young kids, but much like the Dragon Prince that we have on Netflix as well with similar animation, it took me by surprise and at the end of season one left us with quite a cliffhanger. So if you're listening to a review for season two, you should know there'll be spoilers for season one. Now's the time for you to get down below. Let me know what you thought about this season, which was your favorite character, which was your favorite episode, but let's jump into the review. So there's 10 episodes, about 22 minutes long, and I feel like when I got to the end, I just wanted more. It was that good. I feel like this season is much better than season one. That's not saying that season one isn't good, but the story arc developments for the characters here within this season is fantastic. Uh, my son uh, happened to be passing by, so I was watching this, and the next thing I know, he was watching the entire season with me. We couldn't stop watching it. It was that good. I had, ha I had intended to watch it over a couple of days, then do a review maybe tomorrow, um, but uh, Man Alive, we so enjoyed this. We had we were laughing throughout episodes. We were emotionally gripped. There were a couple of times where I gulped in my throat because the emotion was there, and I was so surprised by where the story went. So you could guess some of the stuff that's going to happen with certain arc story moments that I was like, wow, I didn't see that coming, which is really nice, really refreshing. In season one, we got some backstories, but there was a lot of questions that were left unanswered. Here in season two, it picks up with what Kipo um, has started to find out. You know, your father was going to be kidnapped and now she has a power or a an ability that she needs to master in order to help everybody. You find out stuff about her background, about her uh, about her mother that we've never really found out. And, you know what her parents were up to, why her world is like it is. At the same time, all those characters that are on her team, you get to have backstory with as well. Wolf, I thought his backstory was very entertaining, and all the companions, I think, are so well fleshed out in this. But not just the companions, the so-called bad guys. I ended up really Really liking as well. I don't know if you've heard this thing where your story can only be as good as your bad guy. If your bad guy is just a generic I'm bad and I'm evil for the sake of being bad then that's not a very good story but when you flesh out your characters there is meaning behind the, why they are evil or supposedly why they're doing the things that are wrong that they're doing in the story to motivate the your heroes to do what they need to do to triumph over the bad guys and so here we have a backstory and you understand why but when you see the story take multiple paths to get where it does in like the crescendo at the end where everything is heightened to that big climax moment where all these animations always go, you know, and then it leaves you wanting more and you wish that you had a third season straight away. That kind of speaks to how great this animation is. And then talking about the animation itself, it's still so vibrant, so colorful. And it's the world that they've created because everything is massive and has like 12 eyes and six arms or even eight arms or, you know, it, it, they've taken what we know with our animals and then mutated them, which they call muties, obviously, uh, which creates a really fun, vibrant world to have humans and mutants in. But again, we get that separation in so many storylines that really works um, to heighten the sense of tension. So you have muties and humans and try and get them to work together. Of course, you're going to have those humans that want to kill and control. And of course, you're going to get those muties that hate. And then you have this group of people are trying to, you know, the, the, the theme of them is that you can love everybody. And that's what I love about the Kippo character, because wherever she goes, she kind of uh, wins people over to her side with friendship and with love, which I think is a great message to be having today. I know in the first season there was a relationship that some people complained about they said it was like ah oh, that's just because we're in the times that we have now but if we don't change if we don't do stuff that is different then we're always going to do the same thing the height of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting yourself to be able to change that way if society starts changing and starts having love for everybody then that reflects on all things including media news all of that so here we have an animated series that has taken a few themes that is relevant for today and is right for today and I don't have a problem with it so I'm here to champion and say yeah go for it very entertaining story as well 
like I said, laughed out character moments, really heartfelt moments, really great backstory, fantastic animation and world that's created. And every episode leads further into the arc, but it also has those side stories that you love to see. I really love the, um, the cat, like a cross between Viking warriors and uh, woodsmen. And they are just so funny and so great to be around, like their characters, the way they interact with each other with those characters. Each character, um, I guess, group has really been heightened here. So now that we've had that season one that they can kind of uh, use as a, I guess, a backbone to kind of bounce off what happens here in season two. We've already established all those core groups, those cat groups, the snakes, uh, and you know, we have bats and some of some other demographics of different mutant mutation characters or and human characters that we see. And so we have that season one to bounce off of, which kind of is why season two works so well. It's just all around a very well polished series, including the editing. There's stuff that they reference, particularly the last episode where they're going for their moral standings and you have one group saying one thing and you have another group saying another thing and they splice it together and you see how well it works in the story um, or, or the message that they're trying to tell within their story, which is fantastic. Very entertaining entertainment, even though it's not particularly my demographic, I thought it was fantastic. Loved watching this with my son. I can't wait for season three. Let me know in the comments below who is your favorite character. I I jump between different characters um, depending on the episode because I think some of the characters just really shine in certain moments. And then there are some characters that crop up along that aren't p perhaps protagonists, uh, but are just fantastic. Whenever they come on screen, they're great. There's a particular frog that I think his background is growing and growing. And uh, even though you expect him to maybe be part of the team when he says no I think I burst out laughing because that moment was just so great and so right I really like the way they take chances um, with their characters they try not to just do the norm and sometimes they do the opposite of the norm in this animation which makes it a lot more funny there is music that is uh, a very big part of the backbone of this animation as well from the score from the soundtrack it all really heightens the sense of the fun that they're really going for so this story is complete escapism a complete adventure you do kind of have to put your brain aside at times when it comes to this animation because obviously it's animated so there's stuff that happens characters have certain and protection values other things happen that don't quite work the way you think it does like there was a tree filled with uh, gold that kind of has gold running out of it and you wonder how on earth did they get the gold there in the first place and how much gold is it where did they get all the gold what did they have like six fort noxes there's that sort of <laughs> there's that sort of story moments that you go wait how did that happen but that's not a negative, it's just animation and you kind of just accept that for what that is. So I, I'm going to give this an A. Let me know in the comments below how much you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching this review, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.